welcome back to Game Time Live. For our final segment, we have a special interview with one of AU's most prominent leadership figures. She is currently the head athletic trainer, the senior women's administrator, the assistant athletic director for student well-being, and the overseer of facilities and game events. She does it all, and she's Nicole Peart, who joins me now. Thanks for joining me, Nikki. Thanks, Robert. Nikki, you've been around AU for a long time now. As I said, you have all those responsibilities. You're also an alumnus. How do you think your prior roles and time around here have prepared you for the leadership positions you hold? You know, I think when I started here, um, I was excited to be back. Um, I had a great experience here as a student, and I knew the type of uh, staff and faculty that were here um, so supportive of me as a student, and I felt the same as a staff member. Um, so when I started, you know, I just kept asking for additional roles and responsibility as I got more comfortable with the things I had been asked to do originally. Um, and over time, it just kind of grew into uh, all of the roles I have now. So um, it certainly started with the education and then was fostered by some of the leadership opportunities I had here. Um, you know, with different administrators and uh, leaders that gave me those opportunities and, uh, you know, really shaped the positions I'm in now. What's the, what's the toughest part of your daily jobs and routines? Like, what's the primary uh, task and challenge? Well, besides walking up and down the stairs 30 times a day as I go up to my office and down to the athletic training room, um, I think it's really just trying to find a time for everything. Um, you know, sometimes I'm doing administrative roles, other times I'm working with student athletes covering practices, other times I'm trying to do rehab. Um, and to really find time in my day to do all those gets a little difficult, especially since I can't time block them out. It's not like, right. you know, from 8 to 10 I'm doing one thing, 10 to noon. It's always up and down and shifting gears. And so I think it's really trying to stay focused and what, on what it is I'm working on at that time um, and not get distracted by, by what I have coming up next. So you appreciate being busy? Uh, yeah, you know, I think it's natural as an athletic trainer. And I think um, my personality is such that sitting at a desk and, and doing that for eight hours a day is not what I want yeah. to do. Um, and so the variety keeps me on my toes. More limited to your senior women administrator role, um, what's the primary challenge in maintaining gender equality here? You know, I think um, AU is ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. When we talk to other NAP member institutions and some other D3 institutions, I don't think gender equity is, um, carries the same weight or priority that it does at our university. Um, last year, we really dug into this and really evaluated the entire athletics department, you know, to really see if we were providing an equitable experience both for the men and the women. Um, we identified some areas where we could um, address and, and make improvements, and we really have a ton of support from the leadership, both Laura DeLacy and, and Becky Sherry. Um, to make sure that when uh, you know the men and women compete here, they are receiving very, very similar experiences. And so, um, you know, I think it's just kind of always keeping your eye on the ball, always evaluating the programming, um, and making sure that we're offering a similar participation experience um, and, and similar kind of student athlete um, experience portions. So. Is there a specific instance that you can go into detail about something that's maybe changed that you your time at the board? Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think really. Um, you know, when you talk about gender equity, there's a laundry list of items that you want to look at to make sure that you're providing equal experience for the men and women. So it has to do with scheduling of practice and games, um, equipment and facilities, um, access to coaching and staff members, um, and, and some of those other things. So I think what stands out for me um, is after evaluating all of those uh, laundry list items, we really identified increased staffing on the women's side as a priority. Um, and so uh, we hired uh, Jason Ryan, the assistant women's right. basketball coach, this last year. Um, and part of that hiring uh, process was really, you know, to help from a gender equity standpoint, really offering the same type of assistance on the women's side that we were offering on the men's side. Um, so that's one that really sticks out, and I think has certainly been a huge impact on the women's basketball team this year. You've had that advancement. Uh, can you talk about what you do in coordinating community service efforts and other educational programming? What does that specifically mean for that might not know, like the educational program. Sure. Um, from a community service standpoint, I'm really kind of in charge of coordinating all of the department initiatives. So we um, volunteer weekly at the Aurora Interface Food Pantry. Um, we also volunteer weekly at uh, Hesed House for the YMCA, YMCA After School Program. And then we've also coordinated a couple of other things. We've had some different groups out, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, AID, some other local groups that want to come to our events and kind of have special days for their participants. So that's my overarching role in community service. I also then kind of coordinate and oversee all the team-specific community service that's going on. Um, so yesterday I actually just updated that kind of rolling document, and I think as a department, kind of even sports-specific, we've probably done over 50 specific community service events 
it's wow. just this calendar yeah. year. So we're really active, I yeah. think, as a department, but then also team specific. Um, from a leadership standpoint, you know, it's really trying to get um, student athletes involved in NCAA initiatives. So the last couple of years, we've sent student athletes to the Career and Sports Forum. This year, we're hoping to send some student athletes to um, specific NCAA leadership training. Um, it's looking for grants and things like that so that we can um, have some on-campus programming. Um, right now, we're uh, preparing for a step-up bystander intervention training. That's happening on uh, February 19th. Um, and we're combining with um, some of the RAs to do that training. And so, um, yeah, it's really just kind of keeping an eye on the ball with the types of leadership skills we can give our student athletes that kind of fall outside of sport. Um, so certainly the coaches are really tackling um, their leadership skills and their sport specific skills, but my role is to kind of come in and give them some additional skills that really will help them, you know, once they're done with sports here. Basically, the goal is to help student athletes grow as people yeah, and I, you know, I think, yeah, sports doing that naturally, you know, there's a, there's a part of being involved in sports that you're getting a ton of um, intangible skills, and this is just to bolster those efforts. Before you returned to AU in 2007, after graduating in 2004, you worked with ATI, Chicago Bandits, at Benedictine, and earned your master's at NIU in 2005. What pulled you back to AU? Was it something that happened in those experiences specifically? You know, I was really happy at ATI. Um, I was working, like I said, outreach at Benedictine and doing some clinical work. Um, and actually late, um, I think it was August of 2008, a job opened up here kind of suddenly. One of the athletic trainers that was on staff um, left. I think her husband actually got a different job. And so um, that's an unusual time to hire yeah. an athletic trainer. So Mark Walsh, who was the athletic director at the time, reached out to me. Um, he knew I was still in the area. And, and um, like I said, I had a really positive experience here as a student athlete. Um, and asked if I would be interested in applying for the position. So, um, you know, I talked to some of the faculty that I was still connected with, some of the other coaches, and I thought it was a great opportunity. So, threw my name in the hat, and uh, ultimately it was uh, successful that I was able to get that position. So, I started as the assistant athletic trainer. That was my only role when I started yeah. in 2008, and I've, you know, kind of shifted Growing gears. Everything else. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anything from your time when you were a student at AU that you sort of take and apply to now in your career? You know, I think what it is, is that, um, is the relationships that we build with people here. Um, Jen Buckley is a faculty member, she was my basketball coach at the time. Sarah Radke and Oscar Krieger are still in the athletic training faculty, they were faculty when I was here. Um, and I have amazing relationships with those people now, you know, that were, were built then. And so I think at Aurora, you know, the one thing that I've learned is that it's all about people, it's all about relationships. I mean, we have some limitations here. I think, you know, um, we're always working on our facilities, we're always working on trying to get bigger and, and apply more amenities to the students. But at the end of the day, that's so ancillary to actually building the relationships that you want. And so my focus every day is to really have the most positive impact I can on the student athletes. And that's all done just from, you know, greeting them, knowing their name, having a smile, being invested um, in whatever it is that I'm interacting with them about, you know, whether it's an injury, whether it's leadership, whether it's community service, whether it's equity things. So um, for me, it's just to uh, make sure the student athletes feel supported. Um, that's my goal every day, that's where my passion lies, and uh, I certainly get to do that here all the time. Yeah, that's a nice segue. Uh, how do you sort of man, like, you sort of answered it, but how do you manage all the wins? Do you have to transition from students, do you have to transition from uh, your assistants, you have to to administrators, how do you do that on a day-to-day -day basis, like, in sort of your conversation and how you manage it? Yeah, I think it's just um, trying to build a positive rapport and, and trying to uh, hear what people are saying. You know, I think um, people can have different concerns at different times, especially, you know, like you said, when you're dealing with all sorts of different people on a daily basis. And I think it's being a good listener. Um, and then once you're trying to hear, you know, what, what concerns are coming in or things um, that are happening positively, you know, you're taking those, you're processing them those, and then you're trying to make some changes. You know, if it's a concern that you're hearing, you know, what can you do to better serve the coaches, the student athletes, um, you know, people on my staff or administrators? Or if it's something positive, how can you continue to reinforce those practices that we're doing? And so um, I think it's really just devoting your time and energy to what you're doing at that time, listening, and then trying to process that information in a way that, um, you know, you can make changes or continue what you're doing. Having an individual focus on every situation. Yes, that's what I would say. And I think understanding that everything's super connected. You know, I mean, we're all in this kind of together. Um, and I think it's it's getting everyone to really buy into that team vision. Um, that's really important. 
What would you characterize your leadership style as? Do you like to delegate? Are you more hands-on? Um, yeah, I think I need to get better at delegating. Um, you know, I was actually just reflecting recently, and I noticed that I've taken on a lot of jobs, but I haven't really given any away. And so, um, at times, I would rather, uh, you know, do more of the work. I kind of have this little saying that says, uh, delegating only works if the delegator works too. And so I try to try to take on, you know, as much as I can. But what I've realized is that there's a threshold for that. You can only do so much before yeah. you start not being very good at the things you're doing. Especially with everything you already Yeah. Doing. So, um, you know, I've got a great athletic training staff. I'm trying to give more to them. Um, the student athletes that I work with in SAC, I'm trying to give them more responsibilities. Yeah. And so, you know, it's to kind of overarching guide that and not always be kind of like, in the trenches, although that's important too, because I think as a leader, the people you're working with have to see you getting your hands dirty and all of this stuff as well, because I think it just it just makes the buy-in better. I think it, it makes them feel like, yeah, this is really a team, we're all really doing this, as opposed to me kind of sitting on high and saying, you do that, you do that. You know, it's, we're all they, working They see what they're doing, it actually matters when, yeah. when their leader does it. And I can, you know, and they can model a little bit after me, uh, you know, especially with the athletic training students that I work with, I want them to see um, the job I'm doing so that they can grasp that and help kind of guide them in their own process as they become professionals. Do you think there's a wrong answer in how to get people to grow and uh, transition appropriately as a leader or is it just you know, every situation is different? I think every, every situation is different. I think I've been really um, I benefited from the new leadership within athletics. I think um, we've learned a lot from Jim Hammond um, and from Heather Reinke, who I work with on a consistent basis. And I think I'm always trying to pull from other people that I um, uh, that I interact with. You know, what are they doing really well? Um, how are they um, gaining traction with people they're leading? And so I always try to try to learn new things and align that kind of with my own philosophies. And so over the last few years, I think I've become a much better leader um, because I'm open to change and open to seeing how other people are doing things. And so I think that maybe is the mark of a good leader is always remaining flexible and, and knowing that you can always get better, you can always learn, um, you can always pick up new things. Great. Uh, purely to the head athletic training role, what has been the most difficult situation you've had to deal with? Whether it be an injury or someone, uh, I don't know, sort of stepping out, out of line, something you weren't necessarily prepared for. I mean, you've probably seen it all. <laughs> Um, I think uh, probably the most difficult situation is this maybe was six years ago. We actually had a female basketball athlete that went into cardiac arrest during practice. Um, and that was really scary. I mean, as much as you're trained for that and as much as you learn about that, um, when it's actually happening, yeah, I mean, it's it's just really, really a scary situation. Um, our head athletic trainer at the time, Terry Smith, really managed that situation. I mean, he saved uh, this athlete's life. Um, but for me, the most difficult part about that was actually calling that student athlete's parents. Um, her parents lived in the city, and uh, I think it was maybe 6 o'clock on a weekday, and I had a call to tell them that their daughter had gone into cardiac arrest at practice, and that they needed to get to Aurora as soon yeah. as possible. And I couldn't give them any answers because we didn't know exactly what was going on with this student athlete. They had transported her to the ambulance. They were working on her there, and so you know they wanted a firm answer about how she was and what her status was, and I didn't give them that. And so to make that phone call, I mean, you're just, there's no way that you can be prepared yeah. for that, um, to try to deliver that news to a student athlete's parents. So that was certainly impactful for yeah. me. Um, unfortunately, she survived, I and mean, it was a really happy ending. Um, she wasn't able to return to basketball, but overall, that was, uh, yeah, it will always you know, be crystal clear in my mind that day. It was, it was really... And it gave you perspective, too, in yeah. a sense, right? And I think the, it really, the importance of athletic trainers, you know, we play so many roles and we wear so many hats, but ultimately, we're on the sidelines and at practice to respond and react in those specific situations. And, and um, you know, that goes to show that, that there's a reason for it. So you wouldn't say, even now with your new role, newer roles, you wouldn't say anything really surprises you anymore? You, the, the moments when they come, obviously, are difficult to deal with, but other than that, really... No, I think, it, you know, what what changes all the time is the student-athletes and, and the students. You know, with each generation and each, each class that comes in, they always have their unique personalities. And again, as administrators and as leaders, we have to kind of adjust what that student, the personality of that student body is. And, um, you know, as each generation kind of comes through and it's a new class each year, you really have to, like I said, learn and adapt based on uh, the personalities of that particular that's student true. group. Yeah, and I think that that's where the change happens all the time and, and there are certainly things that are surprising in that but um, you know like I said it keeps you on your toes and, and keeps you uh, 
you know, evolve and his own as a staff member. Finally, uh, where do you see the future of AU Athletics going? This will be a really layered question. This can be limited to just this year, 10 years from now. Uh, and how do you see your lead role changing within that time? I think right now it's a really exciting time to be a part of athletics at Aurora. I felt that way for the last couple of years. Um, you know, we just bought a big piece of property where we're looking to expand some um, some sport activities there. We're going to softball's coming in, and, and then you know there's going to be some other sports that kind of transition to that area. We're adding sports. We've just um, you know President Chair just came out and said we're adding women's hockey and, and men's volleyball. Um, and so I just think the growth of the department's exciting. Um, I think the relationship we have with the faculty and staff across campus and, and our singular mission to really provide such a positive experience for the students here is really exciting. Um, and so overall, I just think that Aurora University Athletics right now is growing. Um, we're, we're getting student athletes from all across the country. We're winning at a high level. Um, and it's just something I'm really proud to be a part of. I think in terms of my role, we'll see what happens. I think for now, I'm really happy with where I am. And I'm just really focused on doing those specific jobs the best I can do them. Um, and I'm just excited to be a part of the growth and the development of the department. Um, and like I said, I think we're singularly focused on providing the best experience we can for the student athletes here, and uh, that I can really do. So you're satisfied with where it is now and how you think it's going to be? Oh yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to work anymore. So. <laughs> I guess that's... that's no, that, 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 that's, that's a good answer. Yeah. 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 It's fun. Yeah, thank you so much. Really gives you perspective on all of the inner workings in Spartan Sports. That just about does it here on Game Time Live. For all of my guests, Coach James Lancaster, Tyler Hall, Coach Brittany Carper, and Bethany Dornson, and Nikki Perriard. I'm Robert Zablinski, and until next time, stay classy at you.